Welcome to my community. I'm Sherwood McCaskey. As always, thanks for joining me. Ever since the last Sunday in December of 2019, just over 150 Barbadians have used this program, My Community, to share that history, the customs and the traditions of their various communities. In a few instances, a number of those Barbadians had immigrated elsewhere and later returned to Barbados. This week, as we continue our journey in the parish of Christchurch and set ourselves in the community of Sayers Court, our program is carried by a gentleman who emigrated to Barbados almost 50 years ago. He proclaims his Barbadian citizenship and this island is held dearly in his heart. As expected, he begins with a contrast of his first homeland, or as others would say, he begins by respecting and honoring his first homeland. I must first say from the outside, I'm a Vincentian. I've been living in Barbados for 50 years. So I am truly a Bajan in every sense of the word. And I think um, I have the honor of having dual citizenship. So it's like having the best of both worlds. Growing up in St. Vincent, well, you know, St. Vincent is very mountainous. When you're in St. Vincent, you're either going up or going down. That's, that, that, that's the nature of it. And being a volcanic country as well, it is a well-fertilized country. And talk about fruit, mango, breadfruit, orange, tree ripened stuff, you get the best there is to offer um, from St. Vincent. Um, the fishing as well, because we do have rivers. And as a little boy, I did my little fishing too and so on. And um, it, it was very good. And you get to be adventurous. You get to be, um, get to ex be exposed and so forth. When I left St. Vincent um, at age 11, I was very um, knowledgeable of what went on um, there then. Then coming over here to Barbados, um, it was easy walking, because everywhere seems to be flat. I thought there was no end to flatness. <laughs> and um, I really enjoy being here, and so, um, Barbados being a little more advanced than St. Vincent were at that time, we, we had access to television, we had access to easy transportation and so on. So you had that a little bit of freedom. As I said, I really enjoy the best of both worlds and I count myself um, to be blessed and honored having lived in both countries. Barbados has been um, very dear to me, particularly, and Sears Court, because upon my arrival here in 1973, this is where I, I, I live, at 31 Opal Road which is just about um, 200 yards from here. And I, um, I made a lot of friends. I remember 1973 was the year when we had introduced um, our currency here. Before that, we used to use the EC. So I, I always remember that. And soon after that, then we had introduced Plus, one of my favorite drinks. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a lot of uh, memories. I, I then went to school at St. Christopher. Um, primary school, and back then the headmaster uh, was Mr. Cheltenham. Actually, he is the father of Sir Richard Cheltenham and our um, Chief Justice, um, Sir Patterson Cheltenham. So I had um, something special then. <laughs> um, as you can see, um, Chase Court, it is bordered with um, Bones Land in the south, Goodland in the west. Gibbons in the north and Hopewell in the east. Where we sit here, the constituency line is just about um, 70 um, meters from here. Christchurch south, Christchurch east. So again, I have the best of both worlds, having lived in both areas as well. As you can see, Sears Court is um, mainly a housing unit. Back then in 1973, I came and found these houses and I understand that they were built after Jeanette that occurred in 1955 and as, a, as the demand for houses um, were then, um, these houses were introduced. Through the years though, many people have acquired them, made modification. We have some new ones like that one in the background have been built to at least um, help with the housing solution problem that, 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 that we encounter over the years in Barbados. 
Well, a lot of people were domestic workers then. We had some working on the plantation as well, because uh, you know, that was evident during the um, crop season. And there were a few, as I said, nurses and so on. And we had fishermen as well and so on. But it doesn't, it didn't make a difference to what your calling were in those days. People genuinely mixed and respect each other and saw what each person did as a contribution to building um, the society and the community. So it wasn't of, hey, you have a better job than me, I look down on you. Mm, that wasn't us at all. We really mesh good as a, as a community. This says court also had a day nursery in the heart of the village, actually about 50 meters from here. My brother, who is now 50, he attended that when I came here. Incidentally, the um, lady who in charge, a very patriotic Barbadian, Miss Burke, she is still with us today. Um, later years though, they changed it, say it's called the nursery, that, yeah, that located just across there. They changed it to uh, a children's home and they built um, the, say it's called the nursery then, just at the front, um, bordering to um, Gibbons. So the, Children's home is now um, defunct. I'm not sure what the reason is. As you can see, there's a lot of single units here throughout this um, Sears Court. And there are three blocks, the joint blocks. Um, those were all, all, always there. They added one just behind here, a smaller one, of course. And um, I've tried to make the place what it is. I remember as a boy too, everybody knew everybody. From top to bottom, you don't need names. You know that um, the parents, we came out and we play as kids. Um, that time we used to set what we call fly sticks. I remember that so well. And I, I mentioned the fly sticks first because I want to tell you, um, we would go on the pasture because a lot of houses wasn't built then. So you had pasture and dung trees and when it, um, when it's blossoming, you have the bees and the, the, the flies and all that um, stuff around it. And I remember many a time going out at these tree. By that time too, we had what we call wild bees. I don't think we have so much wild bees now because of the lot of um, spray that we use in the agriculture sector. We did happen to um, kill off a lot of those wild bees. But I can tell you, if one of those ever um, stung you, in your face especially, by the next morning, you look like a different person. I was swollen. <laughs> I had some of those experiences as well. But I mentioned the fly stick because as boys we would go and set the fly sticks. And there was this particular guy, somehow he always used to be the first person to tell us, come and go and let's check the fly stick. And ironically, when we get there, the wood of was a specialty. We would find that his fly stick alone caught three wood doves and nobody else caught. So what he did, he went ahead of us, took the ones out of ours, put in his, and tell us, let's go. <laughs> so I thought that was a, a, a bit funny. We also used to do um, some pitching marbles and so on. And that time there was something we called budget. We used to tear the cigarette box um, paper, like little cards from the um, Empire Cigarette and Trumpet, those cigarettes. And then there were some chewing gums that had any special movie star pictures like Rondell Scott, Raquel Welch, those who were open John Wayne. And we would accumulate those and pitch for those. That's how, how we passed our time. There was cricket on the pasture. Well, we would use anything that can bowl with and so on. And we really had fun as kids. They, 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 there wasn't anything that we didn't do as children. Kite flying was a prominent feature here in Sears Court, a pastime. And we had some um, guys back then, they were good at making kites. They would take the what they call trash bone, stuff from the, the, the cane. And they would design a kite that would fly just as, as high as anything else. And they were good at the ones with the singing angel. I don't know if the people at night thought it was singing. It was more annoying to them perhaps, but they did they, 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 their jo job back then. And, and we really enjoyed that um, very much. They provide um, recreation, wholesome recreation for the children. And as they say, the devil find work for idle hands to do and our hands were not idle at that time. Hence you have a good generation coming out of that era. There was seldom any violence in this area then. We really live uh, uh, as a united um, people. 
and I long for those days. Community members rated their local convenience shops as their number one and most essential service in the community. The service provided by these shops are today still regarded as having a very positive impact on the local area. As a small community, the commerce here was on a relatively small scale. Augustus tells us what he found when he arrived here in 1973. And while in other episodes of My Community, you were told of the special side of the shop where the men assemble to libate, Augustus speaks about a special code that was used by the men in the area to request their daily special. When I came in in 1973, there were um, five shops, mainly Malcolm at the top, Miss Breedy, Miss Williams, Louise Williams, and she's still alive. Um, as a little boy growing up, we used to go to the shop early. Uh, Miss Williams particularly would open the side window and sell you the things. And the guys would come there early for a drink. And ironically, they would call and say, hi, uh, can I have my tea? <laughs> to that, that, that was a, the, the, the breakfast as it were then, you know. That, that probably fueled few, few the driver or whatever it was. But I remember that as a little boy and I thought that was strange. And Miss Mosley, Variety at the front, and Jody Carey's. Um, in those days, I remember the biscuits. They used to be four squares, not the two that you have in the package, you know. <laughs> and they were very, 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 very cheap then. And I was introduced to cook biscuit, which was so strange to me. I've never seen biscuit cooked before, but my stepfather did that, that hard biscuit. And at first I didn't like it, but after eating it a couple of times, I think I acquired the taste for it. <laughs> that is a fine example of how food is represented and viewed differently throughout the world. In fact, food is often used as a means of retaining cultural identity. People from different backgrounds eat different foods. Evidently, Augustus easily recognized and enjoyed this next delicacy because it was also prepared in St. Vincent when he lived there. Yeah, Miss Clark used to make one of the finest sweet bread, um, Joyce too as well. And when those people um, start to bake, you didn't have to ask if they were baking. The, the, the aroma, uh, would greet you from however far you were. And I remember um, there was Miss Jones, she lived about 25 um, yards from here. She used to make this thing called Roni Pony and Black Bitch. I guess they, um, I eat many of it, um, many of it. I don't know if that's why it's still gone, the little size that I can't get rid of then. But um, she provided that and, and these um, frozen stuff, those blocks and so on. She sell them to the school children as well. I remember Miss Elrina Powlett just across there, she did that as well. Um, I became her very special friend, not because of her uh, icicle and all that. And um, that, that, that was pretty good as well. See, so we had people in the areas doing the sugar cake and different things. And we knew where to find them. And we did have a, a, a very good time then. <laughs> As we traverse the island, occasionally we stumble upon something that is peculiar to that community. A business or an establishment really seen in other communities. There was one such here in Sayers Court. I can tell you there was also um, just across here, just in the direction there, about um, 30, 30 yards from here, there was what we call a lime kill. That used to be where you do the quick lime stone and, and all that. It's today when I came in 73, but the trade was abandoned by then. Um, but the area was still there. And I understand a guy by the name of Benjamin, he did that as well. Also, you might have noticed on your way up coming in, you passed the Loma Alien Skills Training um, Center. That used to be an agricultural station. They do um, farming and um, animal rearing and so on. And I was told that Mr. Richard Ho, that we all know, um, he had an attachment there as well. Also, we had, um, we still have it, an entertainment center at the top, known as the Bullpen. I don't know what reason they gave that. They used to have some shows there. I remember there was this show they called Queen of the Bees. 
actually they used to do roller skating in the back. Very popular then with, with, with the young people. Again, wholesome recreation, no violence and, and, and so on. And that, that was a major feature in, in Sayers Court. I also admire the way the people live in the community. We knew each other. Parents talk, yeah, you'll find the odd case where you had a little fighting, but if you did that, it was a rock stone pelting and not a bullet piercing anybody uh, or thing like that. And this, you settle the dispute. Go to parents, maybe you get some lashes then or what. Back in the day too, television, I think it was Channel 3. And I watched things like Sesame Street, Electric Company, Bonanza, the, the, the series Danger Island. Those were very prominent. And everybody back then didn't have a television. And if you were fortunate to have a, to have a television then, it was black and white. And you were welcome at just about anybody's window, staying on the outside, of course, and watching television from um, outside. And, 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 and the, the owner of the house would welcome that, you know? There was no running you, there was nothing like that. And we really, um, we really enjoy and we really mesh as a community. And I really um, long to see those days. I doubt they would come back, but I would really like this new generation because of course, we're talking about back then, um, 40, 50 years ago. So you would have had about two or so generation people who wouldn't know anything about that. But all is not lost because I do see the guys well, they paint tennis court, it ain't say it's court now, and they, 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 they play. It's a form of exercise. It's a sport that is fast becoming recognized in Barbados as well. And um, that, that, that's a positive sign. And it, it gels them together and gives them something wholesome to do. And I wish that would continue as well. No doubt that wholesome experience of caring and sharing Engaging in community sporting activities here in this community will continue. These communities are not complete without the work of the many churches. Church attendance is part of our culture. Community members took church attendance quite seriously. We have St. Christopher Anglican Church, the church I used to attend, um, I, I hate to use the word used to, but the church I used to attend, the Silver Sand Church of God. And the, there was then the Pentecostal church right in front of the Nazarene. And um, the Church of Christ at the bottom of here. And we had a few little groups, um, you know, where Granville Church was out there in Ealing Park. So there was no shortage in places where one could have worshipped. And what I like about then, there used to be a lot of open air crusades. Because I myself used to be kind of lay preacher with, with, with the church. And what I admire about the people then, there was this reverence for, for, um, for God, for uh, Christianity, um, for, 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 for the Almighty. Because if you were having a crusade and you were anywhere within the vicinity of a shop, the owner would close that door, would shut down all selling what it is, just so that the, um, the service um, can, can be conducted. You're not gonna find that today, but I just show you the reverence people had for um, for God back then. That is something that I see I've fast um, I've been fading. There has always been a special relationship between Sears Court and the Silver Sands. For the folks here in Sears Court, its sister community was always known for. Oh, the fishermen, the bones, the wards. Well, I think I started being a fisherman too from very young because what happened, we used to break the sea egg. Siag was very popular then, and Silver Sands Beach was a, 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 a premier area for, for, for um, the Siag. The guys will harvest the Siag, the boat will come, bring them on the sand, the ladies will, will break the Siag and have it all done. I remember they used to do them in a shell with, um, I think, grape, grape leaf, you know? And what was particular to me, like they used to steam them or something because they would get on the then transport board bus, carrying them down, and the whole bus smelled like a restaurant on its way down. Yes, very, you don't mind taking that trip. And I remember very well um, Miss Baino um, being one of the person that, that did that. And what we used to do as boys is that um, the sieg guts, what we call, we used to take that, 
wrap it in small hooks, have some thread tied on, and we used to murder the fish as it were in those days. Just around the rocks, we had grunts, we had um, babies and, and so on. And we did that as a part-time um, part recreation. So we, I do have fond memory of Silver Sands as well. Bank holidays on Silver Sands, well, you know, that was a primary spot for bathing. So we would have um, people come and bathe and, and enjoy themselves. There was a lot of grape trees then. And during the grape season, we would um, fill our thing. There was also fat pork tree as well. And you had to be careful because you had a few manchini trees as well in between. So that wouldn't be a welcome um, um, encounter with those. But all in all, we, we, we did very well as a community and, um, and, and serve our area pretty well. My mother didn't want me to travel too far then, but um, of course, out of abundance of caution, even at the sea, the sea has no back door. And, and I, 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 didn't, I don't think she wanted to lose her, her firstborn, as it were. But oysters, yeah, I remember oysters um, being um, pretty well. That time, the reclamation um, wasn't done, so the police station was just pretty close to the road, just opposite where, um, where the KFC is. And the sea was just behind there, uh, and so on. I, I remember that, that, that pretty good. And, and the, um, the geriatric uh, um, the home was there as well. I remember Lady Miss Burke from this area. She, used to work there, so I was very familiar with that. I remember a guy, Mr. Welch, he used to do his little mechanic just about there, um, just about in the area where that was, and the buses would um, come along that, that area. So I too have fun. And incidentally, when I first started to work at the Stillgreen School and do a little part-time job, it was in Oystings actually that, that I started my working life as it were, my first experience in work. So I have that as well. We could not resist asking about experiences of the La Soufer eruption, not that of 2021, but the Good Friday eruption of 1979 and how it affected his community here in Barbados. So by 79, I would have been 19 and I was working at, it used to be Supercenter, then Massey now, and um, I was coming home the night and I, um, I was in a vehicle and I was thinking that rain was falling and there wasn't any place getting wet. <laughs> I thought that was kind of strange, but it was the eruption then and the dust obviously came to um, Barbados and um, so on. Overnight though, by overnight though, it was cleared and not like the last one we had where it actually went on for days and somehow the, the, the dust was fine then and, and mixed into the soil. This one that came the last time was kind of like cement and clogged a bit harder and I don't know. But I can tell you, the following year, we had a bumper crop of our, um, in terms of our sugar cane. So it must have been some God sent fertilizer uh, and so on. And I then I like uh, my little kitchen garden as well. I too had a good crop without having, having to buy fertilizer. A, a blessing in disguise as it were back there. People make communities put differently without people. There are no communities. Who are some of the people here in this, the community of Sears Court? And what about their contribution? We had some very prominent people. I know you've probably heard about the name um, Madeline uh, Norris. She was a nurse at the hospital, but she also did her own little musical stuff. Her house where she lives uh, stands about um, 30 yards from here. It's in ruin now. And I remember she singing a song like A Parable, and then the song with A for Aki's, all that stuff. All for Zion is Adam's animals, apples, animals, and Aki's. Art. Beets, brandy, bread, bread, fruits, bananas, butter, bear, bees, and berries, seeds, currants, cheesecakes. But I can tell you about her. She looked after her people in the sense as a nurse, she worked at that hospital. And once you enter there and she recognized you, she would give you all assistance necessary. A very loving person. I understand she went to England and um, she passed away. Thing is, she had one son, Peter, and he still communicated with us. And ever so often he comes and 
have fun with all the guys, you know, just like my brother, Ben Cito Searles. He lives in New York and they come yearly. So we still meet, we still have that camaraderie and so on. So they haven't forgotten um, their, their past and their roots, uh, as it were. Uh, we also had, um, I probably think of another famous person, is Mr. Uh, Desmond Burke. He do a lot of singing and that kind of stuff. He, he, he lived in, in this area as well. So we were graced with, with, with people who made their contribution and outstanding citizen. I remember there was a guy uh, living by the name of Kid. He was a boxer and he would show you um, all his boxing move and so on. But he did it bad. He, he did it best when he, he was under the influence. <laughs> and everybody li uh, like him then. There was Cheeseman, a taxi guy living in that house uh, just across that um, unit. And um, Crossy, um, she, I think she had a million cats. She just loved cats. If you want any cats in the community, Crossy had them there back then. And uh, there was this guy, Topin, he used to work in electric company. Remember him so well. Very nice guy, always walked with his hands behind his um, back and always had a, a nice word to, to, to say to you. Um, on the outskirts, there was this fella, Sam. Sam used to work with a purity um, thing and he used to drive a bread van then. Um, from Monday to Friday, Sam was up the best there is. On weekend, Sam out of it with his drinks. But on Monday morning, you couldn't be more sober than him going back to work and so on. And that was a, kind of a, a, a good thing to see. He was in control of what he did and everything like that. I must say too, I must mention um, Lorenzo Herewood. He is um, a driving force in this community as well in terms of cleaning and where you can help in the bushing and so on. So we do have people with that community spirit um, that work. I, to myself, I contribute to um, the area and so on. So they are good people at heart. And I'm sure this community will continue to strive and grow. Now the wish of a Vincentian born who has made a Sears Court Christchurch Barbados his beloved home. He loves his community and in his words, he wants it to continue to strive and grow. Thank you very much, Augustus. I'm sure Wood McCaskey, thank you for staying with me. Take good care of yourself and look out for the interests of your neighbors. Every blessing.